Fred here, welcome back to your Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Gamo PT85 Blowback Semi-Automatic CO2 Pellet Pistol. Please stay tuned. Some of you may be asking yourselves, especially firearms owners, why do you need a CO2 pellet gun? Well, the reason is because ammunition is so freaking expensive, and even handguns, new handguns, are kind of hard to find these days, even used ones. So, a, a good way to maintain your training, which you should be doing. If you have a gun, you should be out there um, practicing. And one of the ways that you could do that on a budget is with a quality CO2 pellet pistol. Now, I dropped a whole bunch of crap on the floor here. So let me see what comes with this. Oh, you get a free 50 rounds of the PBA, which is the platinum pellet uh, pellets, which are the lighter ones that shoot faster. So I send that in. And there's something in here that says, stop, please do not return this product to the store. If you need assistance, call Gamo. And you also get some instructions on how to use this safely. And they stress that this is not a toy a couple of times. And they also state that lead ammunition is a bad thing, especially in the state of California. So I don't want to bore you with any more of that. Now... Uh, just like I just said, and just in case you don't believe me, there is Doug Koenig, who's the best all-around um, shooter, all-around, yeah, world's best all-around shooter, also putting his name on his product saying, hey, it's a good way to practice. I just got done watching a video. Let me go ahead and, even though it's new, <laughs> I don't know how you check this thing for safe. Um, we'll just keep it pointed down range. <laughs> But um, I've never loaded it. But um, I just got done watching a video where he shows all the different ways that you do a stance. For instance, you're, you have your, your old-fashioned weaver stance where you're using isometrics where you're pushing and pulling at the same time. And then came along the isosceles triangle kind of thing. And then um, Doug Koenig has a modification to the isosceles where it sort of reverts a little bit back into the... Um, uh, into the weaver where you, you, you put your left foot if you're right handed just a little bit a little bit forward and what that does is because in the sosceles your hands are even but you usually have one around the grip and one around here so it's sort of unless you have two different size arms that's kind of awkward so you just sort of move your body just a little bit toward the weaver type of stance and, and you get it where everything is neutral you know, where you're not pushing, pulling, everything sort of fits. And you lean a little bit forward, you roll your shoulders a little bit forward. And um, you also, you don't lock your, your arms. You go ahead and you put them out, but then you go ahead and just slightly relieve a little pressure. So that's sort of the way that he shoots. The, the moral of the story basically is, it, what's the correct way of shooting, the correct stance? There is none. And it changes over time. Even before there was the weaver, if you look at a lot of the old training things, they're, they're shooting one-handed with their <laughs> hand on their hip on this side like this. So as time goes by, different methods, but it really comes down to being a very personal thing and what works for you. So let's go ahead and start taking a close look at this pistol and the specifications, and then we'll go ahead and start putting some pellets down to age. This is a very realistic type of pistol. It has a all metal slide and a lot of the, you know, the safety here is metal. The trigger is metal and even the hammer is metal. The rest is a polymer or plastic. So it's very closely as far as materials, you know, resembles your typical polymer gun. So very very realistic. And of course, you have that blowback kind of thing going on also, which is nice because I, I, here's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this to have sort of the um, felt recoil of a, a 22 with some low power ammunition is what I'm expecting. Now, this can shoot at um, 300, let me see, 400 feet per second. Your lightweight pellets, uh, for lead pellets, you probably could expect about 300 
50 feet per second. Now also, before I go any further, there's an interesting warning on Gamo's website for this pistol, and it states only standard skirt pellets should be used in the PT-85 blowback pistols. To avoid damage, damaging your magazine, never use long skirted pellets such as Red Fire Blue Flame, Gold Fire, PBA Bullet, or TS-10s. So you can risk damaging your magazine. Now, to remove your magazine, what you do is you press, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Again, this has been safety checked several times, so I am sort of handling this a little precariously, but it's the only way I can show it to you. Um, here's the magazine release right here, and we'll see if it shoots out. Yep, it comes right out there. And this is a 16-shot magazine, but it doesn't, you know, you don't just load it up with 16. It's 8 on each side, and it's sort of a rotary design right there where it sort of um, turns. See that? So you shoot eight, you eject it, turn it around, put it back in, and then you shoot your, your next eight pellets. Now again, this is a blowback CO2 design. It's a uh, double or single action, again, because um, the hammer gets pushed back automatically like any other semi-automatic, but if you release the um, hammer, which um, I guess the safety, no, the safety's off, but um, you can go ahead you know and probably release it and then you would have to cock it to go ahead and get the hammer back again this is powered by your standard 12 gram co2 cartridges that look just like this this has a five inch rifled steel barrel and let's go ahead and take a look at the safety real quick here is your safety and as you can see to put the safety on it also decocked it by the way you just push it down to pull it up to go ahead and, and select fire, you can't just push it up. You have to pull back on these like little three metal serrations right there. You sort of pull back and then pull up and that red dot says you are armed and ready to go. You're hot. So put it back on safe, just push it down just like that. Uh, they, you got a nice textured grip. This does have fixed dot sights there as you can see there fixed three dot sighting system which I prefer the weight of this is pretty freaking heavy it, it states it's one and a half pounds but when I put it on the scale it's one pound ten ounces without any ammo in it and the overall length is 7.8 inches and the ammunition it takes is your standard um, .177 pellets so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and load the CO2. So you go ahead and just pull this off. And you can see there's like a, you just pull this down here and you unscrew it. And we've got to put our CO2 cartridges, cartridge in there. So you just sort of drop it in like so. And then you just turn this. You should be able to hear a little, nope, didn't hear anything. But that's all it should take, just like that. Then we'll go ahead and fold this back down and close her up. All right, next thing we want to do is load the ammunition. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And we'll go ahead and get our pellets. And let's see how this works. First thing you need to determine is which way is forward. All right, so this is the way it would be inside the gun, just like that. See? Because... This is sort of angled. That rotary thing is just a little bit angled. So you can sort of tell which way is the front. And I guess we just sort of pop these in there. So we'll make sure that the front is going forward. Just like that. And we'll load them in. So I'm not going to bore you while I load the magazine up. So I'll get this loaded and I will be right back. You know, I just noticed while I was loading this that there's little pictures right there to show you which way to... Put them in on both sides there, you can see. Even on the sides they show a little picture so you know which way the front and the back supposed to be right there. Alright, so to load this, we'll go ahead and make sure we have that lined up properly. And you just sort of put it in there just like that. And that's, uh, that's it. Now, we're still unsafe. As you can see there, we are being... Um, reasonably safe here so it is safe so when I'm ready to get this downrange we'll go ahead and take it off safe 
and I'll, I'll catch you I'll let you catch me firing this for the first time because I really don't know what to expect now again the reason why I bought this is to practice my trigger control which uh, I have a tendency, you know, based on videos I, I watch myself shooting, um, I, I can sometimes jerk the, the tr you know, jerk the gun when I'm pulling the trigger, which is a bad thing, and I have a very bad tendency to shoot low and left. Now, I haven't been getting out to the range like I need to, to be practicing, so that's what this guy's for, and I could do it on a budget. Okay, so I'm ready to shoot, so we'll go ahead and take the safety off so again you have to pull this back and push up and you should see that red dot right there and the ice cream truck comes <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that that's the first time this year too that's pretty cool alright so now we are armed and ready so again I like to point my thumbs forward on this side as you can see I have my index finger indexed out here I have my hand wrapped around the part of my hand right here, the meat of my hand is in this part that's left empty on the handle, like that. So that's sort of my style of holding the pistol. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this cushion in just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and aim into my target trap that I have on the other side of my garage. And we'll go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like. And we could also feel what this trigger feels like. Okay, I am a little bit left. Okay, the the first shot, okay, was really long and hard, and the second one was a lot easier. So again, that's that double action, single action. The first shot was double action, and then the next shot was single action, because the hammer is already back. Okay, so I'm shooting low left like I do in real life. And the the perceived recoil is similar, just like I um, expected, like a 22. Okay, so I'm going to try to creep this up to... There we go, we're getting better. And it, it's the trigger is predictable. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine and turn it around. <laughs> I had a uh, I had a pellet fall out. Go ahead and put that pellet back in there. Keep my finger indexed here and keep this pointed down range because I know how safety Sally's like to troll the firearms channels and make sure we're doing everything in a safe, responsible manner. Alright, so we're still single action because the last shot pulled the hammer back. And we'll go ahead and... You can see how I had that, that click, that's, so it's set right there. And then I just got a little bit more to pull, and it goes off. So that trigger is very predictable. It's long. You can see it's pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, and it, it's, and it feels nasty. But it's predictable because now I'm at that final staging right there. And boom. Okay, so you could see I'm gonna shoot this dry fire a little bit. You could, you know, it sort of um, kicks back about that far. I don't know if you could catch it on the camera, but I think it's going about that far right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at that again. There we go. I'm going to bring this up because it, it shot all out. I want you to go ahead and see how that looks. And you can see there's about that much muzzle flip right there. Watch. So, kind of cool. Now, for the next scene, I'll go ahead and uh, clear the target and I'll let you see me uh, shoot the target up.
you can see that you know my point of aim I'm aiming it right at the red dot and you can see how I'm getting a nice group below it and <laughs> that one flyer <laughs> is the one that hit the target so now actually I'm, I'm gonna shoot high is what I'm gonna do I almost forgot to show you that um, this also has an accessory rail right here. So you can go ahead and mount a laser or a light on there also so you can simulate what you may actually have on your, your main pistol. So how do I rate this? Well, um, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. If you look on the... Um, I just ejected the magazine because my, my hand was on there. If you look on Amazon and uh, Pyramid Air Guns, I think is the other website, consistently 4 out of 5s. So that equates to my 8 out of 10s. Now, um, oh, you know what? Made in Japan. It's not made in China either. <laughs> um, I just noticed that. I, I should have pointed that out. Um, also, another thing is, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place today. I'm not feeling that great. The uh, safety, which is on this side right here, the right side, there is none on the left side, so it's not ambidextrous. They got like a fake safety that's just bolted into the metal here, but it's not real. The only safety is on the right-hand side, so it, it's that's kind of awkward. So if you're looking for a replica of your real gun, like I know uh, this went out for the, Bur the Beretta, the Burrito PX4, the Beretta, <laughs> um, you know, PX4. They have replicas of these, I think, Urmax or Umax, I forgot how you pronounce it. They have complete replicas where everything, all the controls are exactly where you want them. And that might be the way you want to go. Now, I kind of like the idea of having something really awkward like this, because this is awkward where the safety is, because that is another way to remind me I do not have a a firearm that shoots real bullets. I have a pellet gun in my hand, and it's, you know, something that really stands out as being very different, because, you know, for someone, and a lot of you out there who have real firearms and then you have pellet guns you know sometimes something you might be used to you might do something with the real gun that you really shouldn't be doing when you had that pellet gun but you should you should treat them all the same you know what i'm talking about but still i like having more tactile stuff there being different so i'm not a big fan of the exact replicas just for those reasons all right um i think i really covered it all I basically will rate this at a 8 out of 10 also. The, the safety is just uh, so freaking weird. Um, I, I personally don't like this extra thing you got to pull back to, get the, to take the safety off. Even though to put the safety on, it's just to press down. That, and it's very tough to pull that back. It's not, it's not easy. I, I, you know, if you're giving this to a kid, they might actually have a little trouble pulling it back to take the safety off. The other thing is that the trigger is really, really strange. There's like, it sort of feels like it stops in two different places before you finally get back to where it's going to go off. So, really, really strange. So, there you go. Other than that, I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot, and it's a great training aid. You could uh, practice your stance, your trigger control, your breath control, all those things that cost a lot of money on the range with real bullets. You can do um, with the proper trap, <laughs> mind you, with the proper trap and, and other safety precautions, precautions associated with this guy because you know, it's shooting real pellets at 350 to 400 feet per second. Um, this is a, a definitely a low cost way of simulating the same recoil that you're getting with uh, a 22 with some of the lighter loads of the 22 long rifle type pistols. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really, really <laughs> appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you. And I hope you had a great evening, and I will see you again officially on Friday.